uh, like I, I sort of crashed the car. Uh, Noah and myself ran a company called Gotham Dream Cars. We rent out exotic cars. I was an enthusiast. So I was like, you know, we should get some stick shift cars. Like there's got, we get a call every once in a while for stick shift cars. We should get this Ford GT because that's a cool car. We had a Z06. This is back in 2006, 2007. And I'm like, Ford GT is perfect. The Ford GT is like a supercar. Instead of paying Ferrari money, which at the time was like $250,000, $220,000, we can go out and spend one hundred and fifty grand and get a new Ford GT. There was one in central Jersey that was up for sale forever. And I was like, cool, let's, let's go buy it. We negotiated, we got 10,000 off. They just offered it like that because it's been sitting there for so long and they wanted to move it. But this was red, white, perfect combination. It had the Macintosh sound system and had the cool wheels. So we're like, all right, we're good. It was a $165,000 window. They offered it for 155. We went down, picked it up. We love the car. We're like, oh, it's a cool car. It needs more noise, but it's a cool car. And then me being a guy with a supercharged Corvette, I was like, well, we could make it a little faster without adding additional risk to the rental company. So we threw the Ford racing exhaust on it through the dealer. The dealer sells this race Ford racing exhaust, which sounds phenomenal. It's probably the best sounding exhaust you could put on the car. And then with me, I'm like, yeah, maybe just a chip and a pulley because it's, it's got the supercharger on it. So we cranked the boost up. We had the car at like 650 wheel horsepower, which was like right where that car belongs. When you hear that thing blip the throttle and then go, it just sounds so like orgasmic. It's awesome. And the car itself was fairly reliable. We didn't really have many problems with it. it the fit and finish wasn't great. Ultimately, it was not the best rental car. We ended up driving it on the uh, Bull Run Rally in 2006 and drove it from New York. And I was gonna, I was having my car, my Corvette was being finished by Chuck Mallet at the time. We were going to drive the Ford GT for the first day or two and then meet up. He was in Bria, Ohio, and we were going through that way. So I was like, when we get to Chicago, we'll just we'll leave the Ford GT, ship it back and take my Corvette the rest of the way. Sure enough, my Corvette was never really ready. So I was like, you know what? We're just going to ride out the Ford GT for the rest of the trip. And it was a great decision because we had a phenomenal time in that car. Uh, I think I hit 204 or 205 miles an hour in that car. And I was racing a Porsche Turbo with Hayden Christensen, who, Anakin Skywalker, in one of the Star Wars movies. His brother Tove was on the trip with us, too. but they were both on the trip, but uh, Hayden was driving a 360, and Tove was driving a Porsche Turbo, and Tove was driving hard. We ended up racing him through there, and after we got gas and we were out, the entire tank of gas, I was not below 140. We got onto the road, and it was like one of those like last fuel stops forever, and we were not below 140 the entire time hit 204 and then of course we got to the stretch of road where we start bouncing up and down and I'm like oh shit. and like almost feeling like you're coming off the ground at even if we slowed down to 170 or something like that was like that's when you pull up next to each other and be like whoa that was legit then we got to the point where we're like oh shit we have to start paying attention to our fuel the the Porsche at least knew they put a fuel cell in their front trunk so they had that extra range we had to do a, a dip off and get some gas. And ultimately we caught up to them again. Cause like after they saw us get gas, they're like, we got this. We could, we could just cruise at a buck 30 and not get pulled over. They thought wrong. Cause I was able to catch up to them cause they did slow down. So I made up a five or six minute quick fuel stop and we pulled into Vegas at the same time. That was a lot of fun. But I had this like love of this car, but that didn't translate over to the rental market. Like the car didn't really go out. People like took it, liked it, but they, they couldn't differentiate between a Ford GT and a Mustang GT. When you tell somebody you want to charge them $1,500 a day to drive a Ford GT, everyone's like, eh, hey, well, like, uh, why would I rent a Mustang for that? I can get a Ferrari for $1,500 a day. I'll take a Ferrari or a Lambo. So the 430s and the Gallardos did a lot better than the Ford GT and the utilization wasn't there. So like, you know what? Let's sell it. And I'm like, look, I'm going to buy that car. I agreed to buy the car for, I think it was like a hundred and whatever we owned, uh, owed on the loan at the time, like $118,000, $116,000. It was going to be the largest amount of money I've ever borrowed in my life, but that car was worth it. I enjoyed it. I had no idea the market was going to go where it went, but I just liked the car. So it was September 21st. I remember the date of 2008 that I blocked the car out in the calendar. It's like Rob buying, don't rent any further. So if anyone wants it, there was some sporadic rentals for over the next two months. And that gave me time to organize a loan and clear out the queue of any customers. Anyone that wanted it before September 21st, we'll rent it out, make a couple of bucks. 
anyone after, uh, I, we would say no, and I would just buy the car. Had like thirteen or 14,000 miles at the time, so we got some good use. But it just it's not the easiest car to drive. We had one customer that wanted to take it but didn't know how to drive stick, shredded the clutch in like, like literally in like 12 miles. And I guess he tried. He said he tried to do a burnout. He was probably in third and literally bird's nested the clutch. So we get the car back and then the clutch is just as if you had dropped it in a, a shredder. It looked like confetti. And we're like, all right. So the customer ended up paying for the clutch, which was fine. And this is when we got it before we did bull run. The car had less than a thousand or 2000 miles on it when the guy burnt the clutch to, to the death. But I just, I needed that car in my life. The last guy that was scheduled to rent the car was down in Florida around my birthday. My birthday, September 18th. It's a couple of days before I'm buying the car. And I tell him, like, look, guy, I just want to let you know, like, enjoy the car. Uh, I'm buying this. This You're going to be the last rental on this car. So just don't go crazy. Like, don't do anything silly or anything like that. It's a tough car. It's an attraction control. Guy said, don't worry about it. I don't drive like that. You have nothing to worry about with me. Uh, Car's in good hands. A couple hours later, we get a phone call. Hey man, like uh, I got some bad news, and I'm like, what? He's like, uh, like I, I sort of crashed the car, and it was like I was shifting from third to fourth on the highway. I was just merging onto the highway, shifting to third to fourth, and the back end came around, and I hit the wall on the highway. I was like, well, how bad is it? Like, and I'm trying to like feel out, like, does the car drive? And he's like, uh, no, the battery's not in the car anymore, and I'm like. Pfft car's done i'm like it's totaled like why does this have to happen to me he was probably shifting hard from first to second lost control went across the highway hit this median spun around hit it again battery came out of the car it was not the best accident luckily it wasn't hurt his insurance company gave us like 125 which was 10,000 more than i was going to pay for it right now i know anyone would write a check for that car for that money now it was a lot of surface damage and the parts are pretty expensive like the clamshell and everything like that but now that the car is worth 200 plus or even that car with an accident maybe 175 190 uh, it still would have been a good buy for whatever the insurance company probably sold it for 50 or 60 grand at the time i was like this far away from owning it and i would have kept it forever i would have 40 50 60 000 miles on it by now because i just liked the car i enjoyed the car i wouldn't have modified it any further i thought it was perfect the way it was luckily there's a lot of them out there and the guys that have them are just sitting staring at them in the garage hoping they're going to go up to a trillion dollars and when they don't and they realize like wow i could take that same two hundred thousand dollars and put it elsewhere and i'd have more money in 10 years than sitting on this i'll be able to scoop another one up so there's going to be one of those in my future uh, that led me to put in the application for the the new Ford GT, which I was ultimately denied for. And I sort of take blame slash credit for getting denied on that. There was a couple of publications that when the list came out, I was the number one guy that like, why didn't this guy get a car? And I had the, the number one viewed video, like all the check boxes that they said they wanted hit to, to get the approval for the Ford GT. I was there. I didn't get it. I had 150,000 views on the video. The next closest was like 20. Um, So I should have gotten the car. I didn't get a car, but I wasn't bitter because like at the end of the day, if I was going to risk that money, I did a similar thing when I bought my 488. I bought a 488 Spider for 383, but I knew the market on the 48. I was more comfortable getting into the market at the time, knowing that at least it's not going to if it's, if it's really a $250,000 car and you buy it for like the Carrera GTs when they first came out, the LFAs when they first came out, the SLRs when they first came out, they shot for the moon, $450,000. And what happens? Boom, they're instantly worth two twenty five, two fifty, dollars dollars And I can't take a hit like that. I can't lose $150,000 taking a risk on a car. So uh, although I wanted to be approved for the car, I still didn't know if I would ultimately end up buying it. So I was like, I got the highest viewed Ford GT video on the internet. So like 17 million, 16 million at the time was the Ford GT running from police. And I was expecting that to sort of carry me through. I put that in the description. And then the bottom of their thing, they're like, in freehand, in 10,000 words or less, tell us why you feel like you're, you should be selected to the, and, and I was honest. I feel that I'm qualified of all the criteria you put together. I've owned the previous car. I've done this. I've done this. I've got the social media following. I feel that I should be selected for the opportunity to buy it, but it's a $450,000 car. 
I'm not going to beg you to give me the car. I'm like, I've never, I, I've never once put myself in a position where I've begged somebody to let me spend a, quarter, a half a million dollars before in my life, and I'm not going to start now. I, like, like future Rob should have been like, I'd probably just delete that last line, but I put it in there anyway. Like, like I've never had to beg to spend a half a million dollars with somebody. And I think that's why I was denied. I'm going to bank on that because otherwise I didn't understand why. But uh, that was my life cycle essentially to date with the Ford GT. But it will end up with an 05 or 06, likely a white with blue stripes in my garage or once I finish my house and can save up some money. ThinWiki is proud to be partnering with Mobile App Hero to continue changing the way we look at documenting automotive history. We're working with them to bring updates to our mobile and web-based app, so stay tuned to their social media and ours and keep telling the stories of all the cars you love.